perhaps as an ode to the horror movie genre itself, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre starts out with all the same joy and promise of a group of friends preparing for a weekend at a cabin in the woods, before things quickly take a turn for the worse. While I definitely enjoyed plenty of my 20 hours with this novel take on the asymmetrical multiplayer genre, where three powerful murderers hunt down a team of four elusive teens, getting started wasn't as smooth as it is in similar games, and there's less to do than expected once you're up and running. Between that and some seriously frustrating technical issues, there was definitely a chloroform doused wet blanket over the whole thing. If you've played any asymmetrical horror game, be that Dead by Daylight or Friday the 13th, Evil Dead or Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed among others, then you've already got a pretty good idea how developer Gun Interactive's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre works. It's similar to the point where it feels extremely familiar at first, right down to borrowed ideas like quick time events and minigames to do things like turn on generators and pick locks, and hiding from baddies who can't be killed. Oh, you ain't getting away. I'm keeping you. But it also includes some important distinctions that help separate it from its peers. The biggest of which is that instead of a group of survivors running from one psychopath, there's a whole team of psychopaths working together to entrap and eliminate their high school aged quarry. It's still lopsided at three killers versus four victims, but that adjustment has pretty substantial effects on the asymmetrical horror recipe, since now both sides require communication and teamwork to achieve victory. I know I always feel a little guilty when my overpowered monster kills off a whole team all by myself, but here I enjoy sharing the task with friends. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre makes things a lot more balanced by making the family of killers only marginally more powerful than the teams they're hunting, as well as being slightly outnumbered by them. The bad guys are still unkillable and will absolutely wail on their targets in open conflict, but without all that raw power concentrated into one monster, cooperation is required to pull off a win no matter which team you're playing for, and that makes things a lot more interesting. I'll find him. Each member of the murder-loving family has modest but useful abilities, like Johnny's power to track footprints in a handy detective vision mode, or the hitchhiker's ability to place traps that leave survivors frozen in place. Victims, in turn, have some pretty substantial and interesting ways to fight back or speed along their escape, like how Leland can use his jock body and tiny brain to shoulder charge his pursuers, stunning them for a good while. The victims can also do cool things like sneak attack the psychopaths with a makeshift bone knife, or burst out of a hiding place to stun them for a time, or even grapple their attackers in a quick time button spamming contest to fend them off for a bit. Even with those good ideas working in its favor though, a lot of wind is taken out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre by some pretty egregious technical issues that everyone I played with experienced every single match. The biggest one is that any time a victim and a member of the family get into close proximity, and especially when they engage in combat with one another, the frame rate takes a nosedive for everybody in the match. It's not unplayable, but the most tense moments are frustrating to play since you might lose track of someone you're chasing due to massive frame hitching, or even if you do kill someone, you don't get to enjoy your victory to the fullest because even the kill animation is choppy. Beyond that, there's also mid-game disconnects that'll ruin your match and some weird issues when trying to gather a party together. I even had one match where my character just became frozen in place indefinitely, forcing me to back out of the session with no option to rejoin. It's always hard to say how painful issues like these will be in the days and weeks after launch, but even with the much smaller player pools during the review period where I knew everybody was playing on good PCs with reliable connections, it was almost always an unstable experience, and that doesn't seem like a good sign. The good news is that, even with rocky technical performance putting a damper on things, each match has a compelling back and forth. 
the family definitely has the more engaging set of objectives, since they're not only hunting the survivors, but setting traps and adding additional obstacles to the mix, like turning on generators that activate electrical barriers that then have to be turned off by the victims. But they also spend their time leveling up their patriarch, Grandpa, who drinks blood you collect from victims and find in the environment, and as he gains in power, it becomes increasingly easier to detect where the remaining survivors are in the process. Naturally, setting the perfect trap for your prey and then slowly closing in for the kill is a thrill, especially when my traps forced someone to jump out of a window in desperation, killing themselves on my behalf. Moments like that allowed me to embrace my inner sadist and put a smile on my face. Victims, on the other hand, mostly rely on stealth to complete their pretty boring objectives, all of which are permutations of the same thing. Open a door somewhere so you can leave. Sometimes that's as easy as finding a few lockpicks and opening a couple doors to leave, especially if your pursuers are doing a bad job of herding you away from it. But there are a few slightly more complicated options, like using one exit that opens on a timer when you fix a pressure valve, and another that opens up a tunnel exit when you solve a simple circuitry puzzle at a fuse box. Thankfully, despite the uncreative errands you have to complete to escape, it's still undoubtedly a good time cooperating with your fellow victims and narrowly avoiding detection, or better yet, making it out of the final exit by the skin of your teeth with all three murderers hot on your heels. I can make it. With such a good baseline, it's pretty disappointing that there are only three maps and a single game mode to choose from, each with only the most minor of permutations from match to match. The gas station, the family house, and the slaughterhouse are all varied and well-designed maps in terms of layout, but they bizarrely all have the same set of four exits in the same general places for victims to escape through and family to guard. Once you've played a level once or twice, all the novelty of emerging from the basement to an unfamiliar area that you then need to escape is lost, and it's super weird that there isn't any special way for me to escape each one. You're telling me that both of these places all have exactly one pressure released exit and one tunnel exit with a broken fuse box? That just feels like it was copied and pasted. It's also pretty odd that there's no real tutorial or single player with bots mode to be found, leaving little recourse for those learning the ropes or trying to sharpen their skills. The only way to learn the rules without playing is by watching an extensive library of extremely dry videos, only a couple of which even bother with voiceover explanations. Since most people probably won't have the stomach for that and will jump right into playing matches, you're likely to encounter lots of players who don't know what they're doing, which can be an extremely frustrating experience when they're on your team. And they're not even that satisfying to kill. I have little doubt that in a year or two when they've added more scenarios and maps, fixed the most pressing technical issues, and maybe thought of a better way for newcomers to learn how to play, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre will become a staple in my growing asymmetrical horror games library. For now, however, my recommendation comes with a lot of caveats. While the less lopsided take on the asymmetrical horror format definitely works, the shallow number of samey maps can get monotonous pretty quickly, and even with a fair number of playable characters and a solid progression system, I found myself way too comfortable with three scenarios after just a few hours. Still, the potential behind this format and the reverence for the beloved horror classic it's based on is clear, even when it does feel a tad half-baked coming out of the gates. For more, check out our reviews of Atlas Fallen and Exoprimal. And for everything else, stick with IGN.